Well, good evening. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Ashland, Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's Wednesday, May 20th. Tonight we are going to be celebrating Ascension. Tomorrow is actually Ascension Day, but we are going to celebrate the Ascension of our Lord this evening. Actually, tonight is the night, oh, you can't hardly see the flame on it anyway, that the uh, Christ candle goes away. It'll be gone then until Christmas Day when Christ is uh, incarnate on earth. So that'll be going away after the service tonight. Um, probably the biggest news that I have for you tonight is that uh, we are going to open the doors for church on Sunday, the 24th. We are taking all kinds of precautions. Um, we are going to be maintaining uh, social distance. We're encouraging you to wear a mask if you have one. Um, it's not mandatory, but we'd like you to have one. Um, we're going to be seating in every other pew, and we're going to be sitting on the ends of the pews, so that way we maintain our, our social distancing. Um, we've figured out what the maximum capacity of the church is by sitting that way. I don't think we'll have to turn anybody away. And if the sanctuary should happen to fill up, we've got a couple spots in the nursery and some spots in the narthex. So uh, please join us. We're going to be taking some other precautions. Um, the elder or the usher will be handing out bulletins. Um, and when the service is over, we're going to ask you to take that bulletin home with you so we don't have to uh, touch everybody's bulletins and uh, get rid of them. Uh, we are going to have communion. Um, during communion, I will uh, lather up with uh, disinfectant before it starts. And I will hand each of you the wafer. I will be dropping it in your hands or grabbing it so I don't touch you. And then the same with the uh, little cups, the individual cups. The elder will hand you the cup. He'll hand you through you from the either the bottom or the probably from the top. You grab it at the bottom. And then when you leave, we'll have a wastebasket on each side and you deposit the cup right in the wastebasket. We'll probably be spacing about three people to a rail or at least maybe a couple and a couple and a person or something so that we can maintain the spacing. Uh, the other thing with communion, communion will be the last item of the service. So once you receive the blessing, once I bless the, you following communion and you go your way down the aisle and you toss the cup, you will then go to the back of the church and exit the church. Um, so, uh, you know, if you have something to grab at the pew, you can probably grab it, but try and keep it with you. So then we can exit, and that way we don't have the, the mass gathering at the door on the way out. So we'll be doing that. Um, I guess the one thing that I want to say is uh, we're going to give this a try. We're going to see how it works. My word to you is if you feel uncomfortable, don't come. Stay at home. We'll continue to be live streaming all the services so that you can still watch from home. And even if you get here and you suddenly feel uncomfortable or there's too many people, please don't be afraid to, to, to uh, leave. We're, we're not upset with you at all. We understand completely. So uh, we're going to do our best to be safe. You know, the, the Lord gives us the opportunity to worship. He also gives us common sense. So we're going to use that to the best of our ability as we try to begin opening up um, this week. I think that's all the announcements I have for now. Um, on the prayer list this evening, we have Ellen Hodgson, Penny Larson, Paul Tolliver, David Ruthberg, Jim Albright, Harold Larson, I checked, uh, I talked to Harold's sister the other day. He's doing very well. So uh, we may be taking him off the list pretty soon. And then again, Andrea. We also have those on our extended prayer list and those who we name in our hearts. Um, we will be, by the way, putting on the webpage, on our Facebook page, and we'll be sending out an email 
with what I just talked about as far as how the service is going to go. And then we will also be mailing a copy to those who don't have email or Facebook or any of those things. So everybody will get a copy of what's going on and how we're doing it. If you have any questions, please feel free to call the church. With that being said, ascension shouldn't be overlooked. Ascension is a time of happy endings as Jesus concludes his earthly ministry and promises the Holy Spirit's imminent arrival. In Jesus' final appearance to the 11 disciples, he tells them that they will be his witnesses, witnesses of his resurrection. Not only will they be witnesses in familiar places such as Jerusalem and Judea, but they will also be witnesses in Samaria, a foreign land where these Jewish disciples did not care to travel. And finally, the disciples will be witnesses of Jesus' resurrection to the ends of the earth. As we remember Jesus' ascension, we also remember the faithfulness of his disciples to be his witnesses and to go where they were sent so that we could know the power of Jesus and his resurrection, even though we are thousands of miles from Jerusalem. We begin now with our opening hymn, number 492, On Christ's Ascension I Now Build. On Christ's Ascension I Now Build, the hope of my ascension, this hope alone has always still all doubt and apprehension. For where the head is there as well, I know his members are to dwell when Christ will come and call them. Since Christ returned to claim his throne, great gifts to me obtaining. My heart will rest in him alone, no other rest remaining. For where my treasure went before, there all my thoughts will ever soar, to silver keep its burning. Oh, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. Today is a day of celebration, grief, and anticipation. We celebrate our Lord's triumph and reign. We grieve that he is not physically present with us. We anticipate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And we celebrate that his promise to always be with us remains and will never fade away. Though Christ is ascended on high and is seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning over all creation, there have been times when we have lived as though we rule and reign over our own lives. We have lived as though Christ were too far away to matter. But our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him, confess our sins, and receive His forgiveness. We'll take a moment for silent meditation. Heavenly Father, we confess to you that we are sinful and unclean. Forgive us 
renew us and lead us so that we walk in your perfect way and delight in your perfect will. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die and rise for you. Christ is ascended and all things are under his feet, including sin, death, and the devil. On account of Christ's saving work and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are forgiven and restored. Alleluia. Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever under the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with sound of a trumpet. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son sent us to the ends of the earth with the gospel and promised always to be with us. Embolden us to spread the good news of Jesus' death, resurrection, ascension, and return through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this evening is from Acts chapter 1, verse 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or season that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Chapter 1, beginning with verse 15. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom 
and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those here, if you'd like, please rise for the verse and gospel. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending you the promise of my Father. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're now going to continue with our hymn of the day, Christ the Eternal Lord, number 829 in the hymnal. Christ the Eternal of grace are freely poured on all who name his name. With thankfulness and praise, we stand before your throne, intent to serve you all our days and make your glory known. Christ the unchanging word to Timeless teaching still our heart set forth on scripture's page. Transform our thought and mind, enlighten all who read. Within your word by faith to find the bread of life in me. Christ the redeeming Son. Who shares our human birth and by his death salvation won for every child of earth? Inspire our hearts, we pray, to tell your love of God that all may honor Christ today and follow. I see unfading light of every lasting day. Our morning star in endure 
right the light the truth away that light of truth to servants as to friends your way to walk your life through it till earth's roof journey ends Christ the ascended King exalted high above whose praise unending ages sing whom yet unseen we love when mortal life is past your voice from heaven's throne shall call your children home at last to know as we are known. Ooh, clunk, clunk. All right, hang on just a moment here while I get set up. Okay. Little whistle wetter here. By the way, June, if you want to sing, I got the other two microphones hooked up. You just need to turn on. Oh, come on. We could do duets. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God, our Father, and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like books and I like movies. And I think it's fair to say that one of the most important parts of a good book or a good movie is the ending. I know that, that June sometimes complains about movies that end with an open ending. She likes to have a good ending. She wants to know what happens to the characters. Do they live happily ever after? Or is there a tragic ending? Most people like the happy endings. Well, on Ascension Day, we celebrate a happy ending to the mission of Jesus that liberates humans from sin and death. But we also hear him say, I am with you to the end of time. And he also says, you are witnesses to the ends of the earth. So today, Ascension helps us to celebrate three different ends. The first end, the ascension of Jesus, marked the ending of his mission. Jesus had willingly come down to earth as a, a little human baby. It took more than 30 years to earn our liberty. It was hard work, living a, a perfect life, proclaiming the kingdom, doing miracles, suffering, pain, being crucified on a cross, buried in a tomb and rising to life. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. After his resurrection, for 40 days, Jesus proved that he was really alive. And then it was time for him to ascend to heaven to a hero's welcome. And Jesus led the disciples out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Nations honor returning heroes with parades. How about the old ticker tape parades they used to have in New York? And we see parades all the time for our veterans. But Jesus, for his enormous victory, Jesus was honored by being seated at the right hand of the throne of God. His sacrifice, excuse me, his sacrifice was accepted. The work of salvation done. The disciples weren't so ready for the words, the end. As happy as they were to see Jesus triumph, they were also bewildered about losing him as their leader. The challenge for Jesus was to show how the end of his physical presence 
was not the end of an illustrious career. Jesus was not going to go into retirement. He was going to remain active. He was going to remain active through the disciples for the purpose of accomplishing the saving of people. So he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You, you are the witnesses of these things. Christ's mission to liberate the world was completed in one way. It is finished. Jesus said it from the cross, and it was. It is. But in another way, Jesus' mission was just beginning. There was no more dying to be done for sins. Yet that salvation, that salvation that was to be proclaimed to the end of the earth. He said to the disciples, you will be my witnesses to the end of the earth. This is the second end to think about on Ascension Day. The second end that we're talking about now is the extent, the, the limit. That How far is it that we are to go with the good news? For years, we have had the vaccine to prevent polio. For years, we've had that. But in some parts of the world, people don't know it. And so they still suffer from that horribly cruel disease. It was necessary to bring them the knowledge and the medicine so that they could learn about it. So it is with the message of Christ. If it's to be helpful for people, they need to know what it is. For it to be helpful for you, Someone had to bring you the message. May have been a friend, probably a parent, could have been a pastor or a teacher. It's through the sharing of the word that the Holy Spirit opens hearts and minds to believe and to live. Luke 24 spoke about how Jesus opened the disciples' eyes to the truth about him in Scripture. In Ephesians, Paul prays that their hearts and minds may be opened to see the great riches of salvation that are theirs from faith in Christ. We are, in a way, in the delivery business. I bet you didn't know that. Delivery businesses are booming right now with all of the online sales the Amazon Primes and everything else. Trucking companies don't produce anything. They deliver objects made by others. Trains, they don't produce anything. They deliver tons and tons of grain and coal and cars and whatever's been produced elsewhere. Likewise, we in the church are in the delivery business, not the manufacturing business. We don't make our own salvation. We can't make another person's salvation. We are here to deliver what Jesus bought and paid for and wants to be given freely to the world. And so Jesus says in our text, he doesn't say, you are observers. No. What he does say is, you are witnesses. To be a witness of a crime can be a life-changing experience. I can give you a negative story about a life-changing experience from witnessing a crime. I won't go into that right now, but someday if you want to talk about my night in jail, give me a call. To be a witness of what God has done in Christ also changes our life. 
We, of course, we're not there or weren't there with with the first disciples to to see Jesus on the cross. And after Easter, to, to see him ascending. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I, we, we have firsthand knowledge of who Jesus is and what it means to be forgiven. We know our destiny as Christians. Our destiny is to share the eternal joys of Christ in his kingdom, for he will come back and take us to be with him. But until he comes again, it's, it's our purpose in life to be his witnesses. Sharing the gospel through which the disciples made to the ends of the earth. And until the end of time. There's no higher purpose, no greater reward in life than to have been the instrument through whom God gave the gift of life and freedom in Christ. But clearly, we can't do it without his help. And so Jesus gave us the the third end to think about. He said in Matthew 28, 20, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Christ is with us. To the end of time, he loves us to the end. Why? Not only to preserve and to protect his people, but that so our mission may be accomplished. Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to us to give us the the power to be effective witnesses of what Jesus said and did. All right, superhero time. Clark Kent. We know Clark Kent. Most people don't know him because they work with him in the Daily Planet. They haven't recognized who he really is, but we know that he's Superman. But when he's Clark Kent and suddenly there's an emergency, what does Clark do? He finds a phone booth, right? He'd be in tough shape today looking for a phone booth. But he finds a phone booth, he hops in, he strips off that ordinary business suit, and what's underneath there? His Superman clothes, right? He couldn't be faster than the locomotive or jump higher than the building or stop bullets in a business suit. Got to put that Superman identity on and and reveal that suit. Guess what? You and I, we're kind of like Superman. As Christians, we're clothed by God and the Holy Spirit so that we can do what he asks of us. In baptism, right there, the little font for some of you, we're clothed in Christ. His promise to be with us always is literally true. For he never leaves us. You recognize how important a statement that is? Regardless of what's happening in your life, no matter how hard it is, no matter what struggles you're going through, or how terrible things seem, he will never leave you. He does not promise that he will leap tall buildings. doesn't promise that he's going to do miracles. But what he does promise is that he will give us the words that we need to say when we need to say them. Through his word, he empowers us to do what he asks us to do. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. You and I may wonder about just how much God can do through the life of one person. Well, just look at what happened when the disciples did what they were told. Jesus said, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. 
They received that power on the day of Pentecost. And over 4,000 became believers. And we have advantages that they don't have. We have the opportunity to share our faith freely. I think we can do it with that little camera right back there all the way around the world. I have a friend of mine from England who watches every once in a while. We're not bound to just share the word here in beautiful little Ashland, Wisconsin. We can reach the world. We have the privilege of being able to gather without fear or reprisal when we worship. We don't have to worry about the government watching us or breaking us down the doors or dragging us out of church. We also have a prosperity that the disciples couldn't have dreamed of. We have means of communication that liberally, literally allow us to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. And guess what? We're using it tonight. If only we had the will to do it. That's the challenge. So my question, do you like happy endings? With movies, writers and the directors, they decide how it's going to end. But in real life, God allows us to help write the end of the story. Those who die without faith in Jesus will have a miserable eternity. But all who trust in Jesus will have a happy and blessed ending to their life, eternal peace, and joy. The ascension of Jesus is a happy ending to his earthly ministry, but it is so much more. It reminds us of our unfinished mission to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth through our witness and through our gifts. And it reminds us that until the end of time, Christ is with us and that we may be faithful and effective witnesses. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Everything going all right back there? People will have to let me know if they like the little streaming message across the bottom. We can change that to put announcements there someday. All right, now, for those that are here, if you would, please rise. In lieu of the uh, Apostles' Creed this week, we're going to look at the second article of the Apostles' Creed. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into our world with a mission to seek and to save the lost. Thank you for his life, ministry, suffering, death, and resurrection. Most especially today, we thank you for seating him at your right hand in his ascension. We thank you, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, at the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus sent his disciples out to the ends of the earth with a mission to be witnesses of his resurrection. Strengthen us as we continue their faithful witness. Embolden all missionaries and evangelists by constantly opening a door for your word to be spoken. We ask this in faith, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, thank you for sending the promised Holy Spirit to guide us in all of our ways. Conform our lives to the word of God and transform us by the renewing of our minds. We ask this with boldness, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, we live in a world with imperfect leaders, imperfect laws, and imperfect communities. But we know that all things are under Christ's feet, and he has all power and authority. So we ask for you to send your perfect wisdom to our elected and appointed officials, instill your perfect justice in our laws and judges, and bring your perfect hope to our communities. We ask this in hope. For we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and recovering, those who are hospitalized and homebound. Especially, Lord, this day we pray for Ellen, Penny, Paul, David, for Jim, for Harold, for Andrea, and for all those on our extended prayer list and those we name now in our hearts. Strengthen them and give them patience in their afflictions. We ask this in love, for we know that Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Finally, Lord, we ask for your comfort for all those who grieve the death of loved ones. Grant them peace as they hope in the resurrection to eternal life. We ask this knowing that Christ is ascended. He is returning soon. Amen. This is where we would normally have the offering. And uh, as always, um, right now we have a temporary mailbox set up outside the church because they redid the cement. Um, they tell me that it'll be ready for foot traffic by Sunday. So then we can use the regular mailbox again. The sidewalk out there in front looks just absolutely beautiful. They did a spectacular job. I can't wait for you all to see it. So anyway, we continue now with the words and the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, once again, thank you for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, one other note I thought about in regards to the service. I have had a couple of people say that, hey, I really don't want to be on the live stream so uh, we made a few changes. One of the things we did is now the camera is mounted up very high. So when you're walking by the uh, choir loft, it will not see you. And secondly, um, when we are going to be doing communion on Sunday, we'll actually be displaying on the screen the words for the distribution hymn so people won't actually see the communion going on. So you can come up and, and not have to worry about being on Facebook Live. So... With that, I, I look forward to seeing you Sunday. Be safe until then. And then, um, once again, thank you. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you peace. Amen. We will now close with our closing hymn. I got to look at it. Uh, Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 821. We're singing verses 1 to 5. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, says the scepter is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion. Thunder like a mighty flood, Jesus out of every nation has redeemed us by his blood. Hallelujah, not as orphan are we left in sorrow.